Hello everyone, welcome back to KWT's Microsoft Outlook Basics course. Today we'll be looking at the number of ways that you can customize Outlook so it displays emails in views that work for you. So you can create as many custom views as you like to affect the way that emails in the main list are displayed. It includes changing which columns are shown, the sorting methods, groupings, filters, and formatting in general. Now you may choose to have a special view for your inbox and different views for other folders within your folder list, or you can use the same views over multiple folders. You can do different views over folders in your PST files or in your archive areas as well. So theoretically you can have every single folder have its own view, although that might be a bit of overkill. It's good to know what's possible though, and if you find yourself sorting or rearranging the list every time you jump to a specific folder, you want to seriously consider saving the settings that you end up with as a view and applying that view to that folder so that you're not tweaking and changing these settings every time you go to that folder. There are three standard views that come with Outlook. You may have some different ones. It depends on your Outlook installation, whether it's a personal one at home, whether it's one at work on a, an exchange setup. But normally you'll see a compact, a single, and a preview. Um, you decide which one you like the best of the ones that come with your Outlook, and then you can tweak it to suit your specific needs and save it as a custom view uh, so that you have exactly what you want. You can switch from one view to another uh, in a number of ways from the view tab. I, you can also apply a view to another folder so that it automatically kicks in every time you jump to that folder. And remember, we went through this before, there is the quick reading mode, which is in the bottom right of your Outlook window, where you can hide all your pinned panes, regardless of what view you have selected, to give yourself more space uh, for the email list and the reading pane. Um, so that's just another thing to keep in mind as you are working with views and changing, uh, changing the view setups. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of these and see how they all work. So here on the View tab, I can go to Change View. And so you can see here uh, I have Compact, Single, and View that I mentioned before. I do have a couple of other views that are also there. Some of these are specific, specifically for IMAP setup, so they would not work on other types of folders, but we'll see that as we go into it. So Compact is the view I currently have set up. And you can see I don't see column headings across the top because what it does is try to preview the email using a couple of lines. And I can actually change the number of lines here if I want to reduce it even more down to a single line instead of three. Or we can go to single mode, which keeps the reading pane, but you can see now that I see a list of columns across the top. So it's a slightly different view and the email is reduced down to only two lines, just basically the date, the subject, um, and a brief part of the uh, text, the body of the email. Or we can do preview, which basically gets rid of the reading pane. So we are just left with the emails, which is great because I have more room to play around with the columns of the email um, to maybe rearrange these. I can move columns around, put them in a different place, and there's a little more room to move, uh, to work with the list of emails. So within this view, I can change the sort method and I can do, use, do that with the arrow key over here, um, the arrow button, and I can select something different to sort by. So I could sort by the from value, whoever sent the email, or I could sort by subject, which may give me a couple of emails together if they're part of the same thread. Um, date seems to be the most common one, but you can also change newest on top or oldest on top, depending on which you prefer. You can also go to view settings and you can get to the sort options this way as well. So I can select what I want to sort by and I can actually sort by multiple values this way. So I might want to sort by uh, the from, whoever sent me the email, let me find it, there we go, and then sort by date after that. 
if I might receive date, receive date. And if I keep all of these, then you will see that now it's sorted by the person who sent it and then by date within that. So there's lots of options there, or I can go back to just date. Um, groups we can get to again through the view settings. So the group by, I can choose to select a specific value that I want to group by. So I may want to group by the from value. So I want to see the emails grouped based on who has sent them to me. And then I may want to choose to sort within that. So I could sort by instead of instead of the, the, the grouping value, I want to sort by receive date and see them within the date order within the group that I have selected. If at any point you're working on a view and you've decided you've just made way too many changes and want to just undo everything, there is always the reset view, which will re reset that view back to where it was when you started. So it's very easy to get um, a little ahead of yourself and make too many adjustments at once before you actually save and apply this view. So you always have that reset button before you have saved the view. Um, and you, when we go to save it, so if I make a few adjustments to my view and I want decide I want to keep that, then I can go to view and I can save the current view as a new view. So this can become my new one. I can give it a name I want. Now, you'll notice I have the all IMAP folders here. If I want to use this view on any of these other folders within my mailbox, I want to make sure I've selected all IMAP. If I know I only ever want to use it on this folder, I can select just this folder and it will not be available for any other folders. So the all IMAPs folder or whatever the option is, depending on your implementation, um, is usually your better choice. It's more flexible to allow you to use those views anywhere else. So I can go to my hold folder and under manage views, I can now go find my barb and I can apply this view to this folder. So now every time I come in here, Barb will be selected instead of some other view. Now you can also apply filters to views. I'm just going back to my inbox. So let's take a look at filters. Use this with caution though. It's very powerful. You can certainly use almost any field that's in an email for a filter. Um, you can see here there's advanced criteria where we can select any any of the fields that are associated with an email. But I just want to do a simple one right now. Let's say I applied a filter that said any emails that were received only in the last seven days. And I select OK and I save that. My email list is now empty because there are no emails in there that I've received within the last seven days which raises a conundrum because I have my inbox and it says I have one unread me email, but I see nothing in the list. And this can be very disconcerting to people until they remember they have a filter applied and it is very subtle. Down here in the left-hand corner is the text filter applied. But if you don't notice that, you will confuse yourself and spend some time running around wondering where is that unread email that I cannot see. So use filters with caution. If you're going to use a filter on a view, try to represent that filter in the view name so that it is obvious to you that that filter is there so you won't spend time wondering where your emails have gone. And of course, you can just do clear all here to remove that filter and we get all of our emails back. Now, one of the handier features in here is conditional formatting. And you can apply conditional formatting to a number of types of different emails. You can also create your own scenarios. But one of the more common one is unread messages. So let me just back out to my email. I have one unread message there, and you can see that the first line of text is in blue. It's maybe a little bit bold, but it doesn't really stand out hugely from my red emails. And that's red as in I have read them, not red as in color. So I could go in here and add special conditional formatting to my unread messages so they stand out more. So I select unread messages, I go to font, 
I could make it bold, I could make it bigger, I could turn it into maroon colored. So you can make some changes there, say okay, save that, and now my unread emails stand out for me. I know exactly where they are. So that's something you may want to consider not only for red emails, but if it's important to you for some of these others as well into, in terms of expired emails, overdue messages in other folders and so on. So something to explore. And like I say, you can add your own scenarios. If there are certain types of emails, perhaps all emails from your boss that you want to highlight in bright orange so that you don't miss them, you can actually do that from here as well. Okay, so what else do we have in settings? There is the option to format columns. I personally have not found this very useful, but you may. Um, it really boils down to things like centering or right adjusting as opposed to left justifying certain columns so that the data that's actually displayed is right, left, or center adjusted. Um, some of these are done with bitmaps and icons instead of actual text. So you could play around with those. I've never found anything in here that has made a huge difference in my workday, though, but feel free to explore it and see if there is something for you. You can, when you're in the type of view like where we see in single and preview, which is what I built Barb for you off of, you can move columns around simply by clicking the column and dragging it somewhere else, and I can rearrange them. I can also right click on the columns and do field chooser and that gives me an option of looking for other fields that I may want to include in the email. So maybe I want to see when the email was sent as opposed to when it was received. There's normally not much difference between the two but it can happen. Um, there's also the mention field which if you recall in one of our last modules we talked about if you have been mentioned in an email that value can be added as well so that you see the at sign that highlights the fact that you're mentioned. The other way you can select fields or remove fields is again from the view settings under columns and here you see all of the fields that have been selected. You can rearrange them here by moving them up and down. You can remove columns if you don't need them anymore. You can certainly add new columns as required. So again, make it work for you. And if you're fine, you are always opening an email to see another value on it, add it to the view. Make sure it is right there up front and center so you can always see it. If there are fields, columns that you don't use, like categories, if you're not into using categories, get it off the view. So go to your columns, take categories and remove it. It just gives you that much more room to see the other fields and it gives you more workroom when you go back to a view that has the reading pane because the columns get even smaller at that point. So take a look at your workday, take a look at what's important to you, play around with the views, make some custom views yourself and apply them to folders. And as I say, if you find you're going to a folder and it's not viewing in the way you want it to be, find a view that works for that folder and apply it or create a new view that works for that folder and apply it. And again, this is one of those things that will save you small moments and small frustrations through the day, um, but will make a big difference in the long term. So thank you very much. We'll see you in the next module. That concludes this module.